can download Python and start using it. You might already have Python installed in your system if you're using a Mac like I am. So if you open up a terminal, you might be able to type in Python and see a Python shell. That's because a lot of MacBooks already come pre-installed with Python on them. We see that this version though is Python 2.7, and this isn't what we want to use. Python has two different versions. Python 2 is the legacy version of Python, and Python 3 is the new version. We want to be sure to use the new version because this is what will be updated in the future. So let's go ahead and close out of this, and then we'll open up a window and pull up the page python.org slash downloads. And we see that the newest version of Python right now is 3.7.3. .3. Let's go ahead and download this. And we see it downloading in the bottom left corner. Whenever it finishes, we'll open it up. We'll go through the installer. A few moments later. And it looks like we've successfully installed Python 3.7. We'll close this and move it to the trash. Now that we have Python 3 installed, we should be able to open up a terminal again. And this time, instead of typing Python, we'll type in Python 3. So this is denoting the version Python 3 instead of the default factory Python version 2. We'll hit enter. And now when we enter this into the terminal, we see that we're running Python 3.7 and that means we're good to proceed. We'll go ahead and close out of this and close out of this one as well. Now the next step that I want to do is to get a text editor. Let's go back over to our window and we'll type in atom.io and this is the text editor that I'll be using in this course. So Atom is just an open source text editor. So that means that the community can build packages and themes for it to improve our experience using it. We'll go ahead and click through and download this. I already have it, so I'll just open up my Atom text editor. This is what the default view of Atom looks like. We'll go ahead and click Atom, and then we'll drop down to Preferences. And there's a few packages that I would recommend to install for this course. The first one is autocomplete-python, which is just an auto-completion tool that we can use when we're coding in Python, and then platform-io-ide-terminal. What this does is it gives us this little terminal down here in the bottom left corner that we can open whenever we want. This by far is one of the most helpful packages for me whenever I'm coding. So I would encourage you to get those two. And then the themes that I'm running, if you want to follow along completely with how mine looks, is one dark in the user interface theme, and then for the syntax theme, I use one dark as well. You don't have to choose these themes, and there's a lot of creative themes from the community as well that you can use, but these themes are very nice for me because they show up brightly whenever I'm recording videos. I'll go ahead and exit out of the settings, and jump back up and create a new file. I'll increase my font size. First thing we should do is hit Command S, and we'll save this as a Python script. So every Python script ends with the extension py. We'll say example.py and click save. I already have one, so I'll replace it. Now Adam automatically gives us a directory here as well. So since I'm working in my desktop, everything on my desktop appears here. This is very useful for navigation whenever we have large projects. But for now, since we just have one script, I'll go ahead and close it. Let's go ahead and create our first Python script. So the very basic one that everyone does and that you have to do as well is using the print function. A function is just denoted by the parentheses after a word. So here we have the function print and we know it's a function because of the parentheses. This function takes in whatever you pass here of the same data type and prints it to the terminal. So let's say hello world. We'll save our file. We'll go ahead and go down to that terminal and then we'll type in Python 3 and then the name of the file. So ours was example.py. Hit return and we see that the return to the terminal is the hello world that we passed to the print function here. And congratulations, you just wrote your first Python script. We'll keep on building on this, but for this video, it's important that we have Python downloaded and we have a text editor ready to go. I'll see you in the next one.